What's going on everybody out there in Badger Nation? It's Mike here and we're doing something that we don't normally do. We normally do not have guests on the show. However, after emailing Lucas Matthews back and forth, I was like, let's get you on the show. Uh, Lucas, I'm really stoked to have you here. Really stoked to talk about what we're going to talk about today. Welcome to the AMZ PPC Den. Happy to be here. Uh, so, Lucas, uh, introduce yourself to Badger Nation out there. You're living in Colorado, been doing digital marketing for five years, Amazon PPC for four years. Uh, how has that been going? What have you been doing specifically? Where are you a seller? Are you an agency uh, owner? Do you work for an agency? Give us the rundown. Uh, so, my name is Lucas Matthews. Um, like you said, I've been doing Amazon PPC for four years. Uh, I have a small marketing agency, Twin Scroll Marketing, out of Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, I uh, I only sell one product. Uh, it's a t-shirt. I did it through Amazon Merch um, back when the platform was brand new. I'm like still kind of kicking myself for not investing more time into that. Like, Had I had any idea how lucrative it could have been, um, it, it's just wild, man. Like Amazon is wild. Um, I pretty much only do PPC now. For mm -hmm. Amazon, there's a period where I was I was focusing more on the seller stuff, but um, as you know, Amazon's just gotten a lot more complicated now. Mm -hmm. um, and sponsored product ads just takes up so much of my time, like the amount of new features, um, just trying to stay ahead of it and be the best of the best at what I'm doing. Like the sponsored product stuff really does take up a lot of my time, but that's good. Like that's mm -hmm. the exact place I want to be in. So that's the expertise I'm I'm fostering. Um, I, yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> no, I hear you. Uh, the complexity of Amazon as a platform has increased precipitously over the last few years in the sense of all the new features that they're rolling out, all of the new ways that you can optimize and build campaigns. Uh, it's just increasing. You know, Every single week, every single month, it's seeming like mm -hmm. you're getting more and more and more levels of complexity. So um, that's very cool. Um, and the topic that we're going to be jumping into today, uh, which is why I wanted to have you on the show, because I thought it was so interesting when we were going back and forth, talking about different topics. Um, you know, we have a high bar for guests on the show and probably like not to pat myself on the back too mm -hmm. much, but you know, this podcast does get a lot of, Hey, can I be on your show requests? And nine times out of 10, the answer is like, okay, cool. Like what bit of information do you think you could leave our audience with so that they can sort of turn around and optimize uh, Amazon advertising better than they did before they listened to the show? That's a pretty high bar to hit. Uh, but when we were going back and forth in email and you're like, this topic, I was like, yes, that topic is very cool. So the, the intro to this topic is if you think about the world of products, there's really like a line down the middle of products that we may be purchasing. The first is sort of the commodity product, the sort of standard product that we all, you know, if we think of jump rope, we all know what a jump rope is, kind of a commodity, but maybe a more unique product might be something that you might find on Kickstarter. That's like a jump rope that also, I don't know, has Wi-Fi in it for when mm. you're jump roping on a mountain somewhere and there's no Wi-Fi nearby, boom, this has satellite internet on it. The point there is with that Kickstarter, very unique product, nobody's searching for <laughs> jump rope with <laughs> Wi-Fi in it, yet maybe they should. Uh, so Lucas, introduce us to this topic, which I think is really interesting because we're going to break down how to do Amazon advertising for both of these. And I think if you are listening and you're marketing commodity type products versus if you're marketing unique products, I think there's things to learn from both sides. So to, Lucas, two things, intro to us to this topic. And do you think my product idea has some legs? Um, so your product idea, man, I don't know. It probably does. Honestly, like in my head, I'm thinking no way anybody would buy that, but I'm just constantly surprised. Are you ready for this? There's an yeah, app attached. There's an app attached to of it, course. and you can see your your <laughs> things, and it'll like coach you on like pacing yeah. and timer. It's a Tabata timer. It's all these things. Boom! There it is. I'm quitting. See you guys later. Yep. 
You're going to be the jump rope salesman. There's, yes. You can connect with them and you can help teach them how to jump rope better mm-hmm. through the app. It's perfect, man. Let's do it. Um, That's right. So we are ending the AMZ PPC Den podcast. <laughs> and this is now the uh, jump rope your way to a better life podcast. <laughs> It'll be much, much more lucrative. Um, yes. So uh, commodity versus Kickstarter. Um, so mm-hmm. I think the best way to think about this, um, you mentioned that a lot of people who view this podcast or listen to it um, are, are more the expert level. But um, just think about like what was selling really well and what was getting mentioned on the amazing seller podcast back in like 2011 2012 so these are like typically products in like the 10 to 25 dollar range um they uh are lightweight they're easy to ship you can source them from china um typically like that for me is what comes to mind when i think Mm -hmm. about commodity products and it's stuff that like is not very discretionary like Mm -hmm. typically the the person who's viewing it is going to say like if i want an iphone charge cord I'm going to look to see, you know, does it have good reviews? Is it the cord I want? Mm -hmm. Um, Are people receiving it well? Is the price, does the price make sense? Um, Is it prime eligible? Those types of things, like very binary. Um, And then typically it's like the first one they see that that meets all those requirements, like they'll get it. So, Mm -hmm. you know, you don't really have like an emotional connection to your iPhone cord. At least I don't. Like maybe there's someone that does, but um, Mm -hmm. that's what comes to mind as far as like the commodity stuff is Mm -hmm. is people don't really have to think about it like you you display it in a way that like it's there for them versus like you mentioned the the sort of more kickstarter stuff this is something that's going to elicit more of the emotional response this is the type of thing that people are going to stop you know they're going to look through the entire listing they're going to really consider you know like all these different new product features and they're going to be a bit more forgiving of maybe a higher price point or a lower review count um so I, when I think about like marketing these two things, when you talk about like having a commodity product, like if you're someone that sells a commodity product, um, you know, and, you, and you're doing pretty well, there's usually you understand that in your niche, there's like a floor as far as reviews go of mm-hmm. like, unless you are, have at least like 500 or at least you have, you have to have at least like a thousand in some niches to be sort of like at that competitive level where you can get ROI positive sales growth through these organic means you've probably been running this product for a long time you know you probably didn't start this year like you've probably had this or maybe you've bought an amazon business um so these are like in my mind the like successful commodity products versus the kickstarter products which maybe you just had a successful kickstarter launch and you're trying to get it on amazon to like get some more initial sales um you might not be thinking amazon is is uh profitable channel at least not Mm -hmm. at first this might just be a way to move more units um so that you can grow your sales you can get some you know positive initial sales growth um and people Mm -hmm. can you know see that you're moving these things you can get a better relationship with your manufacturer so on and so forth um oh go ahead Mm -hmm. so even without so so as we start to talk about strategic approaches and the techniques that we'd want to deploy uh, for these two different scenarios. Uh, Let's start with just sort of goal setting. Because I I know that Mm -hmm. you mentioned, you know, just now, hey, I just have a successful Kickstarter. I'm this brand new idea of like a D2C company, something like that. Um, How should, you know, walk me through the process of sort of meeting with that client. Let's say a client gives you Mm -hmm. a call or, you know, with a unique product versus a commodity product, how, what is the goal setting like? How does the goal setting differ between these two types of products? Great question. So um, I'll start with the the commodity product. Um, so when I when I talk to this brand, a lot of it is going to be down to like sales and spend. Mm-hmm. So those are going to be your big top line metrics and the things that you're going to want to optimize for. Um, so the way that you typically go about doing this is what I've found is a lot of optimization of just the keyword based sponsored product ads. Like those are going to net you the right. biggest growth, at least from what I've seen, like that is the area of opportunity that you can spend your time on. That's going to yield you the highest growth of sales for the, like not really spending as much as maybe like some of the other things so like product targeting when it first came out, you could drum up sales really quickly that way, but that's become like much more expensive lately and Mm -hmm. with the keyword stuff if you're intelligent about it and you do it the right way 
you can still beat a lot of people who have been doing it for a while. So when I talk about goals, like that is going to be the way to do it. It's like building a big keyword list, um, combing through it extensively, determining keyword themes, um, setting up your bidding correctly, monitoring it well. You guys talk a lot about placement settings. Um, so like making sure that those are dialed in, mm -hmm. doing those sorts of things first, and then checking on the front end, seeing like what, you know, if you bid a lot, Amazon says you're well above the suggested bid range, but you go ahead and query the search term that you're bidding for and you don't show up, then it's like you're actually not winning that. So mm -hmm. some of those sort of initial things to make sure you're getting all the exposure that you're like at least trying to get um, versus... Right. Uh, it, it, it almost oh, seems like with a, you know, a commodity project, it's, it's almost like the old school telephone operator where you're just trying to, trying to connect a user search to a keyword inside your account. You want to be sure that you're appearing the right place at the right time with the right bid um, there to be able to hit whatever the exact KPIs are. And typically right. there's, there, you know, there's spend and revenue relational goal. Right. When it, when we get to unique products, um, what is different about that? So I would say for unique products, um, I would typically commodity versus unique. The commodity account has been running for longer. Um, you maybe set up some initial sponsored product ads like way back when, and they're like old now, and you're just not, you know, it's not optimized correctly versus a, a newer unique product. You know, that's probably going to be a newer account. Um, and so I would say that like when you look at goals initially, you shouldn't, think almost remove sales entirely as like one of your goals just in the sense like you should be getting sales um but this is more about discovering what people click on and convert for so that should be your ultimate goal is figuring out the keyword themes that you're going to use to you know target more aggressively in the future mm -hmm. so don't even think about especially early on don't even think about amazon sponsored product ads as something that's going to like you're probably going to be over 100% ACoS, to be completely mm -hmm. honest, and you should be because you're trying to discover these things. Um, like, for example, if you, let's say you're making a version of AirPods, but they're better in every way. Like, they're mm -hmm. more ergonomic, they just connect better, they're just better than AirPods. Um, you're going to be bidding on a lot of, you know, different things. Probably AirPods, probably like hi-fi earbuds, Bluetooth headphones, um, audiophile Bluetooth headphones. Your keyword mm -hmm. list is going to be really long and you're going to, you know, spend several thousand dollars on that. I would imagine like maybe setting a budget of somewhere between five and ten thousand dollars if you can stomach it. Um, being intelligent, you know, like making sure you're optimizing, but paying attention to the kind of words that you're converting for and the kind of words that you're getting clicks for. Um, I've been using click through rate as a way to determine this more now than I did before just because it's more expensive to get sales and you can't quite cast as wide of a net and just get immediate sales for cheap the way you used to. Mm -hmm. So I look at the keywords that are getting clicks also by key, uh, click through rate descending and then just look at the keywords that are getting, you might filter out the keywords that have gotten like one or two clicks, but let's say audiophile earbuds, you've gotten a hundred impressions and you've gotten seven clicks and then audiophile um, headphones, you've gotten 200 impressions, 10 clicks, and a sale. That you can, in your head, be like, okay, audiophile seems to be a word that people are really resonating with. And then you can go back and start to optimize some of the front end things. So you could even sacrifice, like, let's say hi-fi wasn't netting you anything. You could remove the word hi-fi from your title and keep it maybe a little bit more colloquial and say, like, the ultimate audiophile earbuds. Mm -hmm. Um, that way you m most prominently put that keyword in your title and because you do that, you're going to start to see more conversions around that. Mm -hmm. So especially for the unique product, you should use sponsored product ads as a way to figure out the kind of words that people resonate with most for your product rather mm -hmm. than just trying to get sales and spend to the ideal levels. Right. So it's actually pretty interesting uh, so are you familiar with the keyword dump strategy? Uh, well, it's not really a strategy. It's a thing that people do, I think, inadvertently inside their Amazon PPC where they go to a keyword research tool. They, they grab, just do everything. And put they it do in there. absolutely everything. Um, 
So it seems like, uh, you know, obviously we're not advocating for just going and grabbing loads and loads and loads of terms and just dropping those into your account right. uh, and just seeing. Like, so like being thoughtful about it. But it's, it seems as if what we're getting at is with a commodity product, we're, we're like laser focused on the exact terms. Like we're hunting for, like we know that there are terms out there that we have an inclination that are going to convert. And it's like we're zeroing in on them and we're sort of grabbing them. Boom, this is what we want to bid on. And then with a unique sort of more Kickstarter product, or maybe even, maybe even uh, it might be a commodity product that you have no previous data on, like you're starting from square one. You can almost use a thoughtful keyword approach to actually inform and iterate early on where it's saying, hey, I have inclinations that this keyword family will perform well. And it's almost as if going manual keyword targeting first allows you to just sort of speed up the process where with an auto, maybe if you start with an auto, it might go a little bit slower, but with uh, manual keyword targeting, you know, really thoughtful uh, keyword selection, you can potentially speed up your learning so that you can iterate faster and just like you said, improve your titles faster and sort of start to build positive upward momentum. It's like, boom, I just found a great term. I'm going to have this as my number one term, my title. And then hopefully, hey, I just found another term that's doing really, really well or sort of a keyword family and sort of work our way sort of stair step up like that. Um, so would you say that you know, with a unique product uh, where maybe you're not even 100% sure on the precise terms that we're, are going to end up working, that it helps to have some kind of inclination or some kind of assumption of what will work and then sort of go run out and like run these small tests around them. Does this, how does this keyword family perform? How does this keyword family perform? And when you do that kind of research, are we talking a lot about potentially broad match keywords, phrase match keywords? Are we going heavy with exact? Talk to me a little bit about the match type selection uh, when something's brand new, no data, and we're kind of even unsure of what terms will even perform well. So so good good points. I think you pretty much nailed it. Um, I would say for both the commodity and the unique, you should do a lot of keyword research and then whittle it down. Like you should be using your brain in both situations right. so like, many people use amazon to whittle it down they're like oh here's five thousand keywords yeah, like i'll you, just see how it performs just burn your money at that mm -hmm. point like just huck it in the trash because right. that's going to be like just it's going to save you time um mm -hmm. what you really should be doing is like just use you should know your product well enough um that you should be able to look at something like if you're right like it, for the earbud example like if you're doing keyword research for that and you have something like audio equipment like that could mean so many things and mm -hmm. if you don't have that many reviews like that's so broad that i would mm -hmm. say initially like don't even bother doing mm -hmm. something like that like it should be pretty focused and every term you bid on should in your head you're like if somebody searched that and sell my product they should at least be inclined like if I was the customer, like I could see myself buying for something like that. Mm -hmm. And that should be the case with both the commodity product and the the unique sort of right. Kickstarter product. Where you touched on earlier, I would say that like for a commodity product, I, so I pretty much use broad and exact with the, the tiered sort of campaign structure of you put the negatives in the automatic you put the negative exacts in the broad, and then you just have your exact match keyword list. Yes. Um, especially if this account has been running for a while, you should get it to the point where most of your traffic is going to exact. Right. Like that should be pretty quickly the case I've found. And if you've been running an account for a while and most of your sales are coming from an automatic campaign, like you're doing something wrong. Right. You should we fix that. We have this concept uh, of sort of controlled clicks versus uncontrolled clicks. So like uh, an uncontrolled click would be a broad match where you're getting clicks for a broad match keyword or you're getting clicks for an auto campaign. And it's like, sure, like even if the performance is perfect um, for everything that is not uh, that term or every single click from the auto, that's uncontrolled, meaning yep. you're not actually controlling what it is. It's a similar concept to sort of exact match impression share from the Google Ads day, from the Google Ads uh, side of things, mm -hmm. where it's like, how often are you 
act are you appearing and getting clicks for things that you're actively bidding on versus synonyms stems of your synonyms as well as just you know how auto behaves too yep. so what we're saying there is that with a so yeah we, we want to keep that in mind and be thoughtful on that to ultimately be at a point where we've got a high percentage of our traffic coming from controlled clicks yep. so how does so in in terms of the lifespan of a unique product um if, if we use that sort of metric of click control, are we saying that in the beginning there's going to be a lower degree of click control and hopefully over time we increase that number? Yeah, that's going to be the case for like both kinds of products. But mm -hmm. I would say the main difference is that with a commodity type product, there's going to be more like keyword theme trees that right. you're going to be able to convert for. Like if you mm -hmm. sell a like car phone mount, um, you can, you know, car phone mount, car phone holder, mobile right. phone holder for car, iPhone mm -hmm. um, carrier for f car vents. Like yeah. there's a lot of different ways that those can go. Brands, car brands. Yeah. So like, yeah, for Mercedes, for Nissan, for Mazda, like there's so many different ways that that can go. So your job more for the commodity product is trying to find those trees and just do your best job of getting like all those things broken out. And in a perfect world, all of your traffic would be going to an enormous list of exact match keywords. But of course mm -hmm. this takes time and you can't perfectly predict that. So like you're always going to be getting that like brand, the broad match and automatic traffic versus I would say for uh you know more of a um kickstartery product, I would honestly focus less. Like the automatic probably isn't going to do you that much good cuz it's going to mm -hmm. bid on a lot of like crazy stuff and you don't quite if you don't have like the reviews and your price point is really high like you're going to burn through a lot of money, you know, bidding for like just headphones where mm -hmm. somebody's going to be content, you know, maybe with like a $40 pair of headphones that has a 4.5 star review. Mm -hmm. Like those are going to be more the type of like un, um, unexpert consumers that are just going to buy it. And at the end of the day, like the people who buy the Kickstarter products are going to be more of an expert in the niche than the like commodity product buyers are. So they're going to use like more precise language they're going to have longer tail keywords. Um, and when it comes to selling these unique things, like what you should be looking for are the extra descriptors. So like if you're following like a general keyword theme of like, let's say the seed keyword is like uh, earbuds, but actually everyone is using like AirPods has become like a category keyword. Mm -hmm. Like people use it not even referring to the Apple AirPods, just all sort of like Bluetooth earbud type headphones like they're referring to those as airpods like that might be something where apple might ding you for if you include it in your like actual copy but if people convert when you use the word airpod like you have a bunch of different keywords that feature the word airpod then mm -hmm. that's going to be something where it's like okay so i need to do some keyword research around that that like i use helium 10 so this might be something where you use airpods as in magnet you put in AirPods, you get this huge long keyword list, and then you exclude all keywords that don't feature the word AirPods. And then it gives you like a much shorter list. I might take that list, go through it, and see if there's anything that's like AirPod case or like AirPod accessory that you're like, okay, we're neither of those, don't even bother bidding on that. But if it's like hi-fi AirPods or like, um, you know, active sport AirPods, athletic AirPods, those might all be things where you're like, we have an ergonomic design that doesn't come out when we're running. So that is absolutely something we should target. And especially like a uh, Kickstarter product is probably going to have some unique selling points that really differentiate it. If you can, before you even bid on anything, if you can d just do a lot of keyword research and already target the keywords that feature said unique selling point, like if they're like ultra lightweight and they stayed in your ears and they were like for runners, everything featuring like active or athletic or like AirPods for running, like, you know, just using your intuition that those are going to be better keywords. Mm -hmm. So just use your head um, and focus on your unique selling points. And if you honestly can get a keyword list that's like longer than 200 words that are all qualified, like have a seed keyword and then have a descriptor that ties to your unique selling point, 
like if you can just bid on those, that's probably going to be a pretty successful initial build versus something where mm -hmm. you're running an automatic campaign and then you have like a, you know, earbud set to phrase match. Like Boom. you're going to yeah. spend a lot of money figuring out information that you could have just using your head and intuition and product knowledge done yourself just initially. Um, and once you get that baseline level of sales, like once you get a statistically significant, significant data set, I would say that's roughly like a hundred clicks over your lifetime and you see like where your conversion rate shakes out, then you can set your bid pretty precisely and know generally what kind of conversions you're going to get. You're going to get a good idea of what your ACOS is doing. And then once you have that initial sort of like range of where your spend and sales are, then you're probably going to feel a lot more comfortable about venturing out into new areas. Right. Um, you, you mentioned on one of your podcasts too, I want to make sure to make this point of doing the, the sponsor, br uh, sponsor brand yeah. keyword targeted campaigns. I was just going to ask about that. Yeah, absolutely. You need to be doing that at the same time. Like you want to saturate. Um, the term is above the fold, but everything like when you first load the page, everything that you can see without scrolling, like you should absolutely saturate that to the best of your ability with sponsor brand and sponsor product campaigns. Once you figure out these terms that you know you convert for, that is paramount to succeeding. Awesome. I think my last question uh, for you is the use of lightning deals and mm -hmm. coupons um, tell me a little bit about how PPC marketers should be thinking about lightning deals and coupons uh, for unique products, commodity products. If there is a uh, difference there, uh, let's, let's, let's finish up with that because I think that's my last big question mark here. Because for a unique product, it's difficult to drum up those early sales. So yep. let's touch on that. So I like, I've... Um, all the experience I've had with lightning deals, like I've seen it be really successful. Like I've personally seen it be successful. And then I've talked to brands where they're like, Oh, I ran a lightning campaign and it like totally, you know, was the initial bump that like got me there. Um, I, I would say that especially for the unique products, like you shouldn't be thinking that you're going to see profitability in the same way that you would maybe with a commodity product. So a commodity product, like your deals are probably going to be less because your price point is lower and you have less margin to sacrifice. So you can pretty much be running, I don't want to say like an evergreen coupon, but I see mm. a lot of products that just are like 5% off pretty much all the time. Right. Um, if you're running like product display ads, which I've been doing less just because I've seen them be less successful and the inventory is more ex expensive and I've been doing stuff with DSP more, which mm -hmm. you know, if you want to have me on for that <laughs> a different time we could talk about that but mm -hmm. um but the coupon stuff like when you have a coupon and it's a the type of ad that like features it prominently that's going to be successful for both the commodity and the um kickstarter type product like having that visual distinction of like look here's a sale is like it's just marketing psychology like people are going to gravitate towards that um but i would say like lightning deals and coupons can be successful for both but it's more likely that you're going to have to offer steeper discounts on your Kickstarter products um, just because people don't know what it is. Um, if you're offering, if it's a higher price point, I would imagine that it would be than the rest of the products that you're competing with. Like you're going to need it to be enticing enough. It's also likely that most people haven't heard of your brand or like it doesn't have enough reviews that you have that social proof. So you need to make an offer that's enticing enough to get people in. Um, and then if you can use like off, like if you can create the like coupon codes where you can run people through Facebook, like there's a lot of, uh, content around like this strategy of, you know, get a Facebook audience, um, send the coupon to them and then have them buy through a two-step URL to rank. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of information around that and like people have varying success around that, but I know that for a lot of people, it's still successful. I would say that like that is still a pretty good strategy. But even if you're going to do something like on your Instagram where you're like giving out products, um, if you can sort of direct your marketing traffic, at least for a period of time, especially for the Kickstarter product, like if you can direct that all to Amazon and do a lot of your like couponing and giveaway type activities on Amazon rather than like your personal website, like you stand a gain just in the sense that Amazon is a search engine and they're going to reward you for having more of those sales. And I know they discount coupon sales, 
But if you're going to like do a rebate, for example, um, you know, you can't use that to generate reviews, but if you're going to do a rebate, like you can send them through special URLs to get like the keyword rank that you're, um, that you've been trying and working so hard for, for the keyword themes you've identified. So I don't know if that exactly answers your question, but I found that, uh, coupons and lightning deals can be successful for both, but in short, like the unique selling point Kickstarter type product, you're probably going to have to offer more of a steep discount and you're going to take the hit on the profitability and you should just monitor, monitor your keyword rank also. I don't know if I said that, but like you should be monitoring that using these tools and then make sure that you're using the right kind of URLs like Pixelfy, the the company Pixelfy, like Pixel plus FY at the end um, will help you set up like the correct URLs to target these things. Um, but you need to make sure that like you're tracking your keywords and that all of your like giveaway efforts um, ideally, especially at the beginning, are like keyword backed. Mm -hmm. Right on, you know, the world of unique products, you know, a lot of these companies think that, uh, you know, Amazon isn't necessarily the place for them. And I think we've touched on a lot of strategies that can work. You know, I'm thinking of my Wi-Fi jump rope. Mm -hmm. And you know what? After this conversation, I feel like, hey, I've got a strategy now on how to on how to attack that for Amazon advertising. Um, I bet Lucas, there's a market for it, man. I'm, that's I'm, right. I, like, honestly, now that we're talking about it, I bet like if you had the right team, you might be able to make that successful. Honestly, I think Wi-Fi enabled or like Bluetooth or like smart everything yep. in the gym, like smart weights. Like imagine if like it automatically logged all of your workouts, like instead of yeah. like writing your stuff down it like did it and perhaps the mvp is literally like a little band that you put on i don't yeah. know you like to like little stickers on all the weights that's like oh yeah this is how much you measured um it's pretty damn good yeah kickstarter yeah. it let's do it <laughs> we can run the ppc together yeah. lucas thank you so much really appreciate it uh if people want to follow up with you they can find you where um, twin scroll marketing.com. That's like twin as a pair of twins scroll as I'm like scrolling down a page, um, and marketing.com. That's I have a serious question me. for you. Yeah. When you say twin scroll marketing, does anyone like twin is in, <laughs> um, what's the origin of that name? So, so it's funny. Um, it's a lot of people's like company names come from like, uh, like my partner um that i work with his is his agency is called sunken stone it's a full suite amazon agency and his is from like i think it was a thomas jefferson quote about like it deep. matters of yeah it's like it's this excellent deep philosophical thing but mine is just i'm i'm like obsessed with cars and it's a type of turbocharger it's a twin scroll turbocharger ah. and they spool more quickly you have better throttle response there's less lag so it's it was like kind of a car thing i'm sure you you've experienced this where i had like all these different ideas but you need the domain name you need everything to like check out so you can't just like do whatever like growth marketing like everybody's played that out so i just yes. chose something and i i was in sort of like an entrepreneurial rut where i just wasn't doing any work because i was like what is my name gonna be i spent days Mm -hmm. agonizing and i was like just pick something um, yes and the, the metaphor checked out so it's it's a car reference boom that's all there is to it yeah well lucas thanks so much for being on our show yeah have a good so one everybody having me yeah see you next time mm -hmm.